is nothing more than just a chemical scum living upon a moderately sized planet, orbiting around a very average star in the outer suburbs, one among a hundred billion other galaxies. However, I'd like to disagree. I think humans are anything but ordinary. I'd like to give you David Deutsch's perspective, who's a theoretical physicist at Oxford, as to how unique and special humans are. Consider the universe. Imagine we divided the universe into cubes the size of our solar system. So each cube would be 20 billion square kilometers. Now, the question here is, what would a typical cube in our universe look like? In other words, what would a typical place in our universe be? A typical cube in our universe would not be cluttered with glimmering stars. A typical cube in our universe would not be blazing with heat and energy. A typical cube in our universe would not be filled with planets and stars, comets and nebulae. No, a typical cube would be the opposite. A typical cube would be, would be extremely dark. How dark? So dark that its nearest star burst into a supernova and released more energy in a few seconds than the sun has in its entire lifetime, you wouldn't even see a glimmer. A typical cube would be extremely cold. How cold? About 2.7 Kelvins cold, a fraction of a Celsius above absolute zero. Cold enough to freeze almost everything except helium. A typical cube would be empty. How empty? Far emptier than you could ever imagine. An atom per cubic meter empty. In other words, a vacuum. An absolute vacuum. So, a typical place in our universe is cold. A typical place in our universe is dark. And a typical place in our universe is empty. Humans are not typical. Life is not typical. Earth is not typical. We are not chemical scum. We are human. We exist. We are alive. In fact, humans are pretty amazing. According to the author of The Beginning of Infinity, David Deutsch, humans are capable of anything which is not prohibited by the laws of physics, so long as we have the knowledge and means to make it so. So basically, all we need to do is step out of our comfort zone, constantly question predetermined knowledge, Remodel it and advance it via the scientific method. One of the oldest scientific academies, the Royal Society, took out this motto, nullius in verba, take no one's word for it. David Deutsch also says that we are now in the position to make a jump to universality. This jump to universality is the tendency of gradually improving basic systems to make a sudden large increase in functionality and to become universal in some domain. For example, We've invented a writing system which uses an alphabet and replaced the writing system which uses pictograms. The former is universal in that every future and current word is representable, whereas the latter is severely restricted. We've also replaced Roman numerals with Indo-Arabic numerals. Roman numerals have an inherent limit as to how far it can count, whereas the Indo-Arabic numeric system is universal due to the rule that the value of the digits 0 to 9 depends on its placement in the number. This system of counting allows us to count until infinity. Other jumps to universality include the movable type printing press, DNA-based life, and binary computing. So, we have an alphabet. We have a counting system which allows us to count until infinity. And we have digital computing. So, basically, we have all the tools we need to generate infinite knowledge. Exciting possibilities await us as we peer into the future. Life is in an ever constant state of change, and it's our job to steer it in the right direction. The future is our canvas, and we are the artists. It's time to start dreaming bolder and bigger. With increasing technology, the time lag between thinking and doing is decreasing dramatically. Humans are now at the beginning of infinity, and we will always at the beginning of infinity. So with that in mind, let us go forth and break down those walls. There is nothing stopping us from aspiring and creating. A universe of knowledge and discovery awaits us.